Stand to your feet all across this building. We love you today. We thank you for being in the house of the Lord this morning. The Lord is good. Thank you, musicians and singers. Didn't they do a wonderful job today? Thank you so very, very much. Greatly appreciate. Amen. I want to thank your, all the people of God for your worship today, creating an atmosphere for the Lord to do his good work. Amen. I'm glad that I know who he is. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? I know who he is. I don't only know about him, for you see, there's a lot of people that just know about him. But I know him. Aren't you thankful that you know him this morning and the power and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? Once again, I want to tell all of our guests, we're so thankful that you're here this morning. Would you give them another great big hand? We love you. We thank you for being in the house of the Lord. We glorify the name of the Lord today. All of the saints of God, we're thankful. We're thankful. Grab your Bibles, Matthew chapter 28. I have a word of the Lord for you. Take just a few moments of your time today. However, I believe the Lord has given us a word today. Sought the face of the Lord. Ask the Lord. I never want to step in this pulpit unprepared. I never want to step into this pulpit not praying and seeking the face of the Lord, calling on the name of the Lord, because I never take it lightly because I know and understand that there are individuals that gather together that need to hear from God in the day and hour that we are living in. And aren't you thankful that we serve a God that gives us a word when we need it and at the time that we need it? So very, very thankful for the word of God. If you love the word of God, shout amen. Amen. If you're ready for the word of the Lord, shout amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Be reading verse 1 through verse 6. Matthew 28, 1 through 6. It says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Everyone shout, a great earthquake. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus. You're looking for Jesus. The one that was crucified. And then a proclamation was made. And verse 6 it says, He is not here. You're seeking in the wrong place. Because there's going to be a day where he's going to ascend upon you. And you're going to see his resurrection power. He is not here. For he is risen. Notice it goes on to say, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord did lay. By the help of the Lord this morning, I want to preach to you on this thought just two words. And those two words are hell's nightmare. Hell's nightmare. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. If you'll give me about 25 minutes of your time, I believe that God is going to do a work in this house. If you forget about what you're going to do after service, if you'll forget about your family gathering and dinners after church, And just focus your attention on the Lord and say, God, I'm here, so I need a touch of God today. And I'm going to reach out to you, and I'm going to search for you. And I know I'm going to find you today because you are the resurrected king. I believe that God is going to do something miraculous in this house. If you're ready to receive, would you raise your hands all across this building? And let's thank him for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's in this house right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your unction. And I thank you for your anointing that's here this very moment. 
And God, I thank you for every believer that has gathered together today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for every guest that has gathered together today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, I thank you for your word today, for we know that it is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And God, I pray that you'd help me to deliver the word that you have given me and put in my spirit for your people. And Lord, I believe that they're going to receive your word today with an unction and anointing. And God, you are going to do your good work. I thank you for what you're going to do right now. May the manifestation of your spirit rest in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone shout amen. Would you put your hands together for the next 15 seconds and worship him. Oh, that's it. Do it just a little longer. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. And shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I glorify you, Lord. I glorify you, Lord. I glorify you, Lord. Turn to neighbor and tell them, hell's nightmare. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord if you'll help pastor preach today. Easter is a celebration of the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ at the cross and at the tomb. Without question, the cross is at the heart of Christianity. Its centrality is clearly established in the scriptures. Because of the cross, we are no longer bound by sin, a slave to sin, imprisoned by sin, detained and constrained and incarcerated by sin. Our bill of debt was nailed to the old rugged cross. The Bible says he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. And it is by the cross and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that we find forgiveness of sins. It is by the cross that we find the precious blood of the Lamb and the purification of our souls and redemption and reconciliation. I love that old song and we've already referred to it today. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. In case you're wondering this morning, and there's been questions in your heart and mind and spirit for some time, I've come to remind you that there's power in the cross, and there's power in the blood. It does not matter what you are dealing with in your life, and it does not matter what you are going through or what kind of devils or spirits or addictions have you bound. If you can just run to the cross, and if you can just find yourself under the blood, I've come to tell you that God is going to make you whole once again. But the Christian symbol is not only the cross, but also the empty tomb. Everyone shout the empty tomb. And not only the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, but also his resurrection in life. And while the cross is the climax of his earthly ministry, his resurrection is the cornerstone of the gospel message. Without the resurrection, the doctrinal structure of Christianity falls to pieces in our faith. And our hope and our preaching are all in vain. On the cross, the atoning sacrifice was offered. But it was not applied to the mercy seat until Jesus Christ, who was both victim... And high priest took his own blood into the heavenly tabernacle to make an atonement for us before the throne of God. The atonement was completed not on earth but in heaven, not by angels or sinful humanity, but by the resurrected Savior. Although the cross stands at the crossroads of our coming to God, our hope comes from the resurrection of Jesus Christ and equally part of the drama of our redemption. When we look back at the cross... It is meaningful only as we view it through the empty tomb. All other views will be distorted. For you see, the resurrection brings us to the true meaning of the cross. And it radiates the splendor and majesty of God's redemptive plan. The resurrection of Jesus Christ did not originate as a philosophical theory. The resurrection of Jesus Christ did not originate as a theological theory speculation or discovery it reveals that God who was incarnate in Christ broke into the history of man and conquered sin and death he brought hope to a world that faced the despair of irrevocable death he rolled back the dark shadows of faith and released mankind from the suffocating distress of inevitable dissolution I've come to remind somebody in this house today 
for those who have experienced in their lives the presence of the resurrected Savior. There is no more slavery to sin. I've come to remind some folks in the house of the Lord today for those who have experienced in their lives the presence of the resurrected Savior. There is no more corroding pessimism toward life. I've come to remind some young people today for those who have experienced in their lives the presence of the resurrected Savior. There is no more groping and stumbling in darkness and there's no longer a debt of sin upon your life and there is no more wandering around aimlessly in the life of sin for us that has experienced that Easter is just not another day Easter is just not another gathering. Easter is just not another time of fellowship at the church. Easter is not just another time where we gather together to worship the Lord. It is a time of celebration. It is a time of jubilation for the victory that Jesus Christ has won. I want to stop right here and say this to you today under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The victory that Jesus Christ has won has won over sin. The victory that Jesus Christ won over our adversary and the victory that Jesus Christ had won over death, hell, and the grave. It's time to rejoice. It's time to get excited. It's time to remember what the resurrection has done for you and I. I've come to tell somebody today the resurrection is powerful. I said the resurrection uh, is powerful. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what kind of life uh, you find yourself in. If I can just run to the blood and if I can just run to the cross and see an empty tomb, that I have power and a demonstration in my life that'll make me whole once again. The great cornerstone truth of the little resurrection of our Lord is not established on fiction. Some people think it's fiction. The great cornerstone truth of the literal resurrection of our Lord is not established on a fantasy or half lies or pipe dreams or make believe. I recall a time a young man came to me. I was ministering to him for two years. And he said, I don't know whether I believe if there really is a God. I said, all right, all right, we'll do that in just a moment. He said, I don't know whether or not I believe that God can move in my life. He says, I don't know whether I believe or not that that he really died and resurrected on the third day. He said, I've never felt him in my life and I've never experienced him in my life. So I don't know him to be true. Man, the Holy Ghost got a hold of me. And I had goosebumps from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. And that is a lot of goosebumps. And I looked at him and I said, young man, I said, the Holy Ghost can come on you right now. And the power of God can come on you right now. And that God that you're wondering about and that God you are not real familiar with or not familiar at all with, I said, you can feel his presence right now if you so desire. He had tears begin to stream down his face and he said, I long to feel him. I long to sense his presence. I want to know that he is alive and well. I want to know that that which I hear and that which I read and that which other tells me that they find in the word of God. I want to know that that is not fantasy or make believe or fiction or or pipe dreams. And I said, boy, I said, raise your hands right now. I said, the glory of the Lord is going to rest upon you. And I spoke the word of faith and I said, God, I want you to reveal your yourself to him and your power and in your might and that is all I said and all of a sudden he began to shake under the power of the Holy Ghost and within about 30 seconds he began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God as the Spirit of God as the Spirit of God gave the utterance and after he quit speaking in tongues After about five minutes, his eyes got that big. And he said, Pastor, preacher, he is real. He is real. I felt him. And he is real. My God, I've come to tell somebody in this house, if you're wondering, knowing that God is real, I've come to tell you, he's here. He's here. He's here. I've got it. You've got it. He is real. He is real. And I feel him right now. The Bible, the prophecies unfolding before our eyes, the personal experience we've had with Almighty God. The touch of the supernatural that you and I have received, the awesome 
powerful presence of God that we have encountered more than validates that he is alive and well. More than validates that he is not dead, but he's alive forevermore. He's alive and in this place today. If so be that the resurrection were, were not a fact, it would be time to stop everything that we're doing. If so be that the resurrection were not a fact, it would be time to stop our preaching and stop our singing and start, stop our witnessing. If so be that the resurrection were not a fact, it would be time to close our Bibles. It would be time to move on to something else. It would be time to try and find another way out as much as possible. It would be time to lock our doors and send everyone home. If so be that the resurrection were not a fact, our faith would be dead and all hope would be gone. But I'm glad to tell you that everything we do and everything we say and everything we believe and everything we are is built on Jesus Christ who said in the word of of God. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I've come to tell you the enemy is going to try to steal, kill, and destroy you. But Jesus says, I've come, I've come, I've come, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants to give you a glorious life. He wants to give you a life of peace and a life of joy and a life everlasting. Oh, if you believe that, clap your hands and give God praise. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I thank you for your resurrection power. All of the Christian systems of truth tumbles if the resurrection goes down. I thought of a picture that I saw some years ago of a great arch made of stone. In the Bible lands, you see them by the hundreds and many date back to the time of Jesus and before and There was the arch of triumph and gates and many doors were made in the shape of an arch. And one stone in an arch, the most important stone, is called the arch stone. A-R-C-H, the arch stone. It is a V, a V-shaped stone. And it fits right in the middle of the bottom of the arch. And the weight of all stones rests upon that arch stone. It is said that if you want to tear down that arch, you don't have to dig at the foundation or put pressure on the top, but just remove that arch stone. The one in the center which holds the weight in the arch will come down. So it is with all the truth of Christianity. If by some subtle power of the devil, the resurrection can be disproved, the whole system of Christianity would come tumbling down to the ground and all the Bible would become as a legendary myth. The devil can try, let me stop right here and say this, the devil can try all he wants to, but he cannot disprove the resurrection. The devil can try all he wants to, but he cannot explain away an empty tomb. The devil can try all he wants to, but he cannot disrupt uh, that there is a living Savior. He knows he can't disprove it. He knows he can't destroy it. And so what does he do? He grabs the minds of people like you and I in believing that this is just a part of history and believing that it's just a part of the good old days and believing that it is just a part of the things of the past and in believing that it's just good reading material. And there are some who are quick to relegate Jesus to history and relegate Jesus to the good old days and relegate Jesus to the days gone by. We've got to bring him out of our obscure yesterdays and mystic tomorrows and into our here and now. Our God is a God not merely of yesterday, but he is a God of today. Let me stop right here and say this, that we are living in a culture and we are living in a society today that says all kinds of foolishness. They declare all kinds of foolishness, but I don't care what they may say. And I don't care what they may believe. And I don't care what they think. I'm declaring that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm declaring that you can't get to God any other way. And you can't get to heaven any other way. And you can't leave this world any other way. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is risen. The greatest single event in human history displaying at once the most tremendous force and exerting the most powerful influence upon the entire world was not a mighty military victory. 
It was not an amazing achievement of the arts and it was not an ingenuous invention of man and it was not a stupendous scientific discovery. The most world-shaking and the most world-shaping and the most world-changing and the most hell-shaking occurrence of all time was the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a reason to get excited today. You know, I really don't care what you think about me. Some of you are sitting there saying, Pastor, you look kind of foolish today in your striped suit, dancing around and shouting and carrying on and speaking so loud about the, you know, I don't care really what you think. I'm not here to please you. People may say them Pentecostals are a little crazy. The world may say the apostolic people are a little nuts and out of their mind. I've come to tell you, they said the same thing in the book of Acts when they told Paul, Paul, because you believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, thou art mad. You know what they're saying? They were saying, Paul, you're crazy. You're nuts. You're a fry short of a happy meal. The the driveway don't go all the way up to the garage. It doesn't matter. He said, I have soberness and I have a civility and understand that I know who he is. It doesn't matter if people think I'm crazy. It doesn't matter if people think I'm nuts. It doesn't matter if people think I've lost my mind. I am mad because I believe in a resurrection of the Savior. I'm full of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name on my way to heaven. And I've got a reason to shout. I've got a reason to rejoice. I've lost my mind. Hey! If it's good enough for Paul, it's good enough for me. If it's good enough for the book of Acts, it's good enough for me. Come on, it's time for some of you to lose your mind. It's time for some of you to lose your mind and say, yes, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. All if you believe it, clap your hands and give God praise. Hey. I am who I am through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you may think I'm crazy. Tell him, you may think I'm nuts. Tell him, this morning, you may think I've lost my mind. I don't care. Get out of the way. I got to praise him. I got to love him for he's alive and well. And he's touched me. He's delivered me. He's pulled me out. You may think I clap funny. You may think I look funny. You may think I act funny. I know who he is and he's been so good to me. He's alive and well in my life. Oh, come on, cup your hands again and give him praise. Woo! Hey! Nobody's making me live this way. Nobody's making me act like this way. I choose to act this way. I choose to live this way. You can be seated. I'm trying to hurry along. I'm almost done. Woo. I'll never forget. I got to share this with you. I'll never forget a time. It was on a Sunday service. Matter of fact, I think it was like around Easter time, if I'm not mistaken. There was a a man in the church that came to me and he says, Pastor, he says, I've got a guest with me today. And uh, make sure we calm it down just a little bit. No lie. God is my witness. Man, I got so mad. I had to pray. Because I want to be careful what I said. He said, now, now, I know you get a little excited when you preach. And he said, calm it down just a little bit today. Don't act so crazy. Don't act like you've lost your mind. I said, bro, I lost my mind a long time ago. Ain't no getting that back. When I was eight years old, I lost my mind. When God filled me full of the Holy Ghost. Hey. 
And so, 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 Brother Rodney, the Holy Ghost had to get a hold of me. So I was calm. And I let him just leave the office. And I said, well, brother, we'll just see what God will do today. And I knew God was going to rock his world and rock his guest world. There was going to be a rocking and a shaking going on. And so he walked out of that office, Brother Tommy. And I stood right there in the middle of my office and I said, God, you show up today. And God, you manifest yourself today and let the Holy Ghost fall in this house. And I made my mind up. I'm going to shout more than I shouted before. And I'm going to run the aisles more than I run the aisles before. And I'm going to dance more than ever before because that cat ain't going to tell me what I can't do when I stand in the presence of Almighty God. And so I walked down that aisle. And it wasn't the anointing. And it really was an inspiration, Brother Mason. It was orneriness that got a hold of me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. You don't believe that, do you? God bless you. You're my friend. Thank you. And he was sitting about right here. Where'd Brother Josh go? Now, it wasn't Brother Josh. He was sitting about right here. And the closer I got to him, Brother Workman, the ornerier I got. And I looked at him and stopped. And I said, my brother... Get ready, the Holy Ghost is about to rock this place. And he had the funniest grin on my face, and he elbowed his neighbor and said, watch out. Watch out. All of a sudden, we started singing the first song. I can't even remember what song we were singing. All of a sudden, place started going nuts, and I was just smiling. Get him, God. Hey, roo, roo, roo. get him, God. Roo, roo. Go get him. Roo. That guy's got that big. He looked at me and said, I said, because I know what happens when you get in the presence of a resurrected Savior. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost began to fall. There was a lady ran by him and a man run by him and a lady in front of them began to shout and carry on in the presence of God. I just smiled and smiled and smiled and said, go get him, Lord. Go get him, Lord. All of a sudden, the saint of God that told me that, he looked at that man and said, well, I guess we just got to submit to it. The Holy Ghost is here. I read his lips. And I said, God, now do your work. I walked down that aisle, didn't even get close to him. And that guest that was with him threw his hands in the air. And in about five seconds, uh, he began to speak with other tongues. Uh, Hey. After about five minutes of him speaking in tongues, I walked down to him and I said, who are you? He gave me his name and he said, you know what? He says, I am an atheist. And he said, I never believed in God in all my life. And he said, my friend, your saint was afraid that I would get scared and run. But he said, I have been looking for this all of my life. He said, I tried to find it in the bar. I tried to find it in relationships. I tried to find it in drugs and alcohol. But when I came to an apostolic church and visited a resurrected Savior, something got a hold of me and it's changed my life forever. He touched a I've come to tell somebody, when you get a hold of a resurrected Savior, you're going to bring resurrection power in your life and it's hell's nightmare. Well, if you're thankful, clap your hands and give God praise. Hey, I've come to tell you the devil is nervous. I've come to tell you hell is about to have a nightmare because there's about to be some people that understand the power of the death, burial, and resurrection. I want you to stand to your feet right now all across this building. I want you to raise your hands right now and pray in the Holy Ghost. The Lord is here right now. The glory of the Lord is here right now. You're standing in the presence of a resurrected Savior. Musicians, come. You're standing in the presence of a resurrected Savior. And through the... 
and through the death, burial, and resurrection, which is repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name, and receiving the Holy Ghost, the victory is complete, deliverance is complete, and salvation is complete. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. The Lord wants to do something right now. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. The Lord wants to do something right now. Come on, you still believe in the death, burial, and resurrection? Come on, you still believe in repentance and baptism in Jesus' name and receiving the Holy Ghost? Hell's having a nightmare. Hell's having a nightmare because the victory has been complete on that day. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Come on, raise your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. There's healing in this house right now. The resurrected Savior is visiting us right now. The resurrected Savior is visiting us right now. The resurrected Savior is visiting us right now. I thank God for the plan that was started and fulfilled and completed through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a question for you today in closing. Where Where do you need resurrection power today in your life? Is there brokenness in your life today? Then I've come to tell you there is power in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is there fear in your life today then I've come to tell you you're in the right place because there's power and deliverance in the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ I know in a crowd such as this today there's heartache and there's pain and there's trouble and there's despair in your life and you're searching for an answer Well, you know what? You found the answer because there's power in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Has sickness, disease afflicted your body? Then I've come to tell you there's power in the resurrection and in the death and burial of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you feel like you don't know what your next step is in life? I've got an answer for you. His name is Jesus. And he's alive and well. The Holy Ghost is here right now. If you need forgiveness of sins in your life. And maybe you're entangled with the things of this world. And maybe every vice and addiction has gotten a hold of you. Guess what? You are in the right place today. Because there is power in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you need God to do something in your life. And if you need God to demonstrate his power in your life in an unprecedented way, and you need to experience the power of the death, burial, and resurrection, I want you to raise your hand right now. It doesn't matter whether you're a saint. It doesn't matter whether you're a guest. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand right now. Wally. Is your sister here? Come with her real quick. Keep your hand raised if you would. God's about to do something miraculous in this house right now. God has been doing a good work in Wally. Remind me of your sister's name. I forget. I'm sorry. Kim, I've known you for years. and I, I was your youth president. I remember you too. The hand of God's on you right now. The enemy's tried to steal, kill, and destroy you. 
But the power of the death, burial, and resurrection is in this house right now. Hita, would you raise your hands? Hita, labo, soto, rubba, sata. That's it. Let a renewing come on you right now. Rubba, sande, de, 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 de This is an apostolic church, and I'm going to be an apostolic pastor. While I was preaching today, you felt the conviction of God come on you. And you heard a voice from God saying, come on home. Come on home. Everything's in the past. You serve a resurrected Savior. And a resurrection means new beginnings. God is about to give you a new beginning right now. I want you to raise your hands right now. When I lay my hands on you, the Holy Ghost is going to come on you and a renewing rubba shata da 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 And a renewing is going to rest up on you from the top of your head to your eyes all over you right now. Will you raise your hands, God, by the authority of your word and the power of the name of Jesus? I loose him now. I see right there. That's the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Come on, say to God, pray of the Holy Ghost. There's a renewing of the Holy Ghost right over here. The resurrected Savior. That's what I'm talking about. The power. The power of the death, burial, and resurrection. Yes, yes. He's being renewed in the Holy Ghost. You want to give God praise. Here's what I want us to do right now. The Holy Ghost is in this house. If you need God to do something in your life, there's a power and demonstration here right now. If you need healing in your body, if you need God to forgive sins, if you need the Holy Ghost, I want you to step out of your pew right now and make your way down that aisle. Come on, I want you to come real quick. If you need deliverance in your heart and mind and spirit, I want you to come right now. Come on. I want you to come right now. I want you to come right now. Come here, sir. Come on, keep coming, keep coming. What's your name? What is it? Randy? The Holy Ghost is all over you right now. When I saw you walk down that aisle, I saw the glory of the Lord over you. And God is about to do something miraculous for you right now. When the saints of God raise their hands towards you and I lay my hands on you, you're going to feel something come on you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. And what you're going to feel is the presence of God and the power of God. I want you just to yield yourself to that and see what God will do and begin to worship Him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You ready, Randy? It's going to come on you. Raise your hands right now. Saints of God, raise your hands toward Randy right now. That's it. Close your eyes. Begin to worship God right now. Give your voice to the Lord. God, by the authority of your word and the power of the name of Jesus, I receive what you have for me right now. That's it, Randy. That's it, Randy. That's it, Randy. That's it, Randy. In the name of the Lord Jesus. 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 That's it, Randy. The Holy Ghost is all over you right now. The Holy Ghost is all over you right now. That's it. That's it. Let your tongue go right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close to the Holy Ghost. He the Holy Ghost is sweeping all across this house right now, even those in the pews. The Holy Ghost is ministering to right now. I want you, if you would, to take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside right now. If it's appropriate, take that hand right now.